15 minutes, we're going to be going to talk about the area of cloud computing. Now, the buzz around the cloud shows no sign of going away. In fact, we're now starting to see the creation of cloud experts and cloud expert roles within leading organizations. But can cloud computing actually be adopted in a practical way for many financial services firms, either for them to use themselves or to provide those services to their customers. Well, joining us now to discuss exactly these issues are Peter Margrini. He is Technology Applications and Solutions Consulting Practice Executive at Northern Trust. Also with us is Hans Cobbin. He is the CEO of, of Arkelis. This is the first wholly owned Swift subsidiary. It was created by Swift last year. And last but not least is Laura Merling, VP Developer Platform Alcatel Lucent. So thanks to all of you for joining us. I think the first thing for people who are not in your field of cloud computing, what is cloud computing? Let's start with you, Peter, first of all. Um, cloud computing really is not a, 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 as new a concept. It's been around for a long time about really how to use shared services mm -hmm. and use them effectively. And what cloud computing is today really speaks to the fact that technology has caught up with those concepts. Mm -hmm. And now you can actually enable technologies that allow you to share services around the globe. So it's all these on-demand computing applications and uh, capabilities that's living in a cloud. Correct, that's <laughs> correct. So if you think cloud computing, try to forget about your standard view of how you see computers, operating systems, databases. Think about it as uh, a service, like Peter says, a service that's available mm -hmm. somewhere on the internet. You don't mm -hmm. know where, you don't know what kind of brand is underneath it, the hardware, the bare metal, uh, mm -hmm. the databases. Mm -hmm. It's a cloud-based service uh, for whatever service you would like to get out of it. Mm -hmm. So um, I think a, a way to maybe oversimplify cloud computing is to say if you could take your business and dynamically scale it when it needs to and shrink it when you need to shrink mm -hmm. it down again, that's how I'd look at cloud computing. It allows you to scale your business and reduce it down and not have the cost associated with it always being prepared to scale. Okay, so Peter, you're obviously a client uh, mm -hmm. buying some of these cloud computing services. You're from Northern Trust. It is a, a bank based in Chicago in, in right. the United States. Tell us, what do you see as the business case for adopting these cloud computing applications in your bank? You know, I think for financial institutions, really the business cases come in two forms, one around savings mm -hmm. and one around speed. Mm -hmm. From a savings standpoint, um, as Laura just mentioned, the idea of capacity on demand, mm -hmm. having that kind of opportunity where if you need to scale, you can, mm -hmm. and you can do it cost effectively. Mm -hmm. You're sharing your cost with other entities. Uh, on the speed front, it's more about how quickly you can bring product to market. Uh, when you've got standard services, when you've got uh, utilities that people can use, they don't have to construct them themselves. Mm -hmm. So what they end up doing is they assemble their solution and that assembly can take much faster to market time. Can you give us some examples of how you've used this at Northern Trust? Sure, um, from a uh, saving standpoint, mm -hmm. you'd look at the infrastructure mm -hmm. and our uh, hardware environment. We've probably saved tens of millions of dollars in new hardware mm -hmm. by just simply upping the capacity and utilization of the hardware we had using virtualization mm -hmm. techniques, which is part of the cloud. On the speed front, we offer, um, in essence, an internal platform as a service mm -hmm. that provides security, single sign-on, and database access, mm -hmm. so developers don't have to recreate all of that. Okay. And so we get products to market in 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, rather than 180 or worse. Okay, so Laura, you are from the very, very, I would say, upstream end, if you like, you know, you're actually creating some of the infrastructure that clients are going to be using. So tell me a little bit about what clients are actually asking for in the financial space. What are you selling most of? What's popular? <laughs> what are they asking you to do that you probably haven't wrapped your head around yet? <laughs> Yeah, I think there's, um, we'll start with kind of what the categories are of mm -hmm. things that you can get, right? Mm -hmm. So there's infrastructure as a service, which mm -hmm. is basically the centralized computing platform, mm -hmm. uh, the hardware and software that somebody manages for you. Mm -hmm. There's platform as a service, which is um, 
if you think about centralizing, uh, as Paul talked about, there's a set of, of services, uh, security or other things that developers might want to use that are pre-built services that you can centralize. So it's platform as a service that everybody can use to develop off of. And then there's software as a service. So think about um, something like salesforce.com, right? Mm -hmm. CRM, or think yeah. about something like mail. Those are end applications as a service. Um, what we're, I'm in the platform as a service mm -hmm. area specifically, but what we're seeing is some interesting requests. And this is across financial services and other industries, but it is, um, if you think about uh, what the cloud gives you, there are different um, service level agreements, different mm -hmm. availabilities of uptimes. There are different needs that you have for different parts of your business. Mm -hmm. um, as mentioned in the, in the panel yesterday, sometimes you may only need um, to guarantee four hours of, uh, of, of, um, of, you know, up to four hours of downtime is a maximum, where in sure. other cases, it can't be down at all. Mm -hmm. um, so what we're seeing is customers are asking us to be able to um, dynamically scale across different cloud types. Mm -hmm. So you have a dedicated private cloud, you have a public cloud, mm -hmm. and then you might have a third partner or backup cloud, and each one of those would come with a different SLA, and how would you dynamically route transactions or activity based on the type of activity that it is and the requirements. So my application might require, my mail application, I don't, you know, if it goes down for four hours, you know, we'll be in trouble, but not as much as if our, you know, trading system went down for four hours, wow. right? So again, thinking about um, those different SLAs and how you dynamically allow somebody's business to use each of those. Okay, well, one of the things that we're trying here to do on Cybers TV is not use any jargon. So oh, you just sorry. mentioned SLA. <laughs> now I have to tell you, I've been I've been mapping oh. my own cloud. I've had all uh. my diagrams here, but I haven't come across SLA. Tell everybody what that means. Um, so <laughs> my apologies. A service level agreement. So it's your commitment about the amount of, of uptime. So how long? Uh, you know, what's what's the most amount of pain you're willing to go through uh, in terms of letting your system not be available? And, okay. and we as providers of, of technology guarantee a particular amount of, of availability of the sure. system. So sorry about that. Very clear, <laughs> crystal clear in fact. Let me go to you Hans first of all because you are in the application as a service business. Right. So tell me what you would be looking to collaborate with someone like Laura, like Alcatel Lucent, and what you then, how you then add value to pass that along to someone like Northern Trust. Well. Actually, we are, as you said, we are an application uh, provider. Mm -hmm. uh, at this point in time, customers have a choice on whether they install that application on site and manage it themselves. Um, obviously, we're looking at the cloud uh, to provide what we call outsourced messaging services. Mm -hmm. And again, we're, we're, it's down to services. What we're looking at is uh, providing these services in a way that is completely different than it used to be um, because as mentioned before as well, there are a couple of aspects here. First is cost, mm -hmm. uh, total cost of ownership of a cloud application or a service-based um, offering is completely different. There is no capital expenditure up front. Mm -hmm. There is a kind of pay-as-you-go uh, mm -hmm. model. And the second argument there, or the second uh, driver there, is, as I said before as well, elasticity. Mm -hmm. uh, these days, we are not just facing high volumes, but there is also high volatility in the mm -hmm. market which means you have to cope with changing requirements mm -hmm. uh, on the fly. Mm -hmm. Cloud computing typically caters for that. So what we are doing is not just lowering the total cost of ownership because it is in the cloud, we also cater for uh, taking care of peak uh, volumes, uh, mm -hmm. for example, of trading systems and, and messaging infrastructure. And then the third is um, um, time to market. New services, bringing them to the market, uh, developing them, testing them mm -hmm. in the cloud is requires far less effort as a way of speaking, yep. uh, though there are a couple of constraints, we can talk about that later, but we develop though the outsourced messaging, bring it to the market, lower total cost of ownership, uh, shorter time to market, and elasticity mm -hmm. of the infrastructure is very important. Which were some of the comments you were alluding to earlier. Let me ask you, I started by asking you about the business case for cloud computing in your bank. Is there a place where there isn't a business case? I mean, because there are huge concerns about security. Um, tell us what you think. Is it tough to get people on board for cloud computing and get budget? Uh, you asked a couple of different questions mm -hmm. there. I think starting with the last one, the idea of getting people on board and tough um, from a constrained budget environment that with the markets and mm -hmm. the economy, 
uh, I think people see the value that we are being able to gain on the foundational side. Mm -hmm. And so that investment, many companies in partnership with their IT organizations, but leave it to IT to figure that out mm -hmm. and spend the money effectively. I think as you move up, whether there are things that the cloud doesn't do, you know, it doesn't solve all the problems. Mm -hmm. I think the, the challenge we all have as financial services is the privacy and security of a cloud environment that's not internally hosted where we'd have a private cloud, which mm -hmm. is something we would create. And also the multi-jurisdictional mm -hmm. issues where you've got privacy in the Channel Islands, you might have something in the sure. Asian region. Um, the cloud might be able to step up to that, but then someone's going to have to have that capability mm -hmm. in those regions. I, I, I I want to come back to you, Hans, because I mentioned that you were a wholly owned Swift subsidiary. How do you think you can apply some of the things that we've been hearing? We've been hearing about the Northern Trust case, but how can you apply these applications specifically to financial services and banks and getting more clients on board? I'll ask that to you and then and maybe Laurie may have a couple of comments. Okay, as said before, one of the models we're working on is outsourced messaging, where we say, uh, let's build a private cloud in, um, on the edge of what Swift is doing today, mm -hmm. which some say, and I think with certain, I, I would agree with that, Swift has been kind of a cloud infrastructure for a very long time already, mm -hmm. uh, where you have a central infrastructure that acts as a service. Now in the edge around the Swift network, as we know it now, we see a lot of demand talking to our, say, top tier customers mm -hmm. um, in terms of how can we be, or deploy our internal systems that do that messaging and that interact with the Swift network, but with other networks as well, mm -hmm. in a more scalable way, mm -hmm. um, on a, in a service-based way, where we don't have to cater for changing standard, changing uh, external environments, mm -hmm. but obviously, um, as said before, in an extremely secure way. Mm -hmm. So we have to take care of compliance issues, security issues, because at the end of the day, you maybe it's been referenced before, you don't want the cloud to be the ultimate California hotel yeah. or motel where you check in and never know where you're, when you check out. So uh, let's be very conscious about the the context of what we are operating mm -hmm. in. So yes, obviously, elasticity uh, in that messaging uh, domain uh, mm -hmm. in the peripherals of Swift, um, security, um, compliance, but cautiously, as we can, uh, as we know that there will be a lot of demand for that. Mm -hmm. But we have to take care of those constraints. Mm -hmm. What about interoperability because and data portability? Because some people are saying, well, it's okay. I mean, I, I might get some software to use in this particular cloud, but can I then take that and take it somewhere else? So does it really tie down clients and not give them the kind of mobility and flexibility that they want? Which one of you wants to take that one? Go ahead. There's a couple of aspects. One is, um, how you actually apply the cloud. So um, if I want to create a server dynamically, is there a standardized way that you can say every time I want to create an instance of a server, mm -hmm. right, it works like this, or every time I want to check the server and make sure it's up, right? Yeah. So availability. So you can standardize services in terms of uh, how you approach it in each cloud. Um, but also then I think it's the centralized um, view of, of APIs and, and, and as um, Paul had mentioned, you want to take things like security or authorization, authentication, and even some other core bar parts of your business, things like logon services um, around uh, authentication and authorization. You might want to take um, uh, other aspects of functionality that you use throughout different applications mm -hmm. and have them as standardized sets of services and the way other people interact with them is through APIs. Mm -hmm. And I think approaching that the market, when, you, when people think of cloud computing, you think of dynamic elasticity and you also think of APIs as a centralized way to get access. Well thanks for all of you for joining us at Cybers TV. It's been nice to have you with us. <laughs> <laughs>